Hi, good evening to each one of you. Thank you for taking time and joining us today. Uh, we will be doing a little more advanced technical analysis. Before we start, my name is Vivian. I am head of investment consultant uh, for Century Financial. I would be taking the session for you all today. Uh, if you are very new to this, do not worry about it. I am going to take it uh, from level one to you know the high, uh, higher advanced technical analysis. So do not worry if you are very, very new to this. And if you already have expertise in trading, uh, again, it is not going to be of bore to you because these are some techniques that you can adapt to your already existing strategies that you might be already using. Now, today the topic that we will be looking into is Fibonacci, which is also known as a golden ratio. And how does Fibonacci help us to trade or to find uh, sound investments uh, to put your money into. So before we start off uh, into Fibonacci, there are a couple of uh, basic uh, understanding that I would uh, let you all know that you need to understand before you take any action into the market, especially before you use any tools to understand where to enter and where to exit. We also need to understand what instrument we are going to be trading in and how these instruments perform and what kind of returns can you look at it? What kind of returns can be expected on a day to day basis? What kind of returns can be expected on a monthly basis or even a longer term portfolio? Of course, at the same time, it will also show us what kind of volatility and what kind of downside we can expect uh, in that particular given instrument. Let's move forward and look at uh, the uh, whole basis of technical analysis. Basically, technical analysis has very less to do with fundamental analysis. Now, when you see, when when I say fundamental analysis, I'm talking about you studying the uh, financials of a company. Let's say, for example, Apple. You would understand the fundamentals beyond uh, behind what Apple does, the products it produces, and the demand and the supply for the products. And then you look at the financials for it. Those are the fundamental analysis. But then Technical analysis is basically, it will help you identify opportunities. It will identify at what price would Apple be a good price to buy and hold if you are thinking of a long term investment or even if you are trying to take an advantage of a very short term move. We need to understand what price would be uh, the best price to enter for Apple. And that is where technical analysis will come and help us identify these opportunities. Now, however, technical analysis may not be based completely on fundamental analysis. They might be a good entry point based on technical analysis. But if fundamentally a company or that particular product that you're trading in has a lot of uh, negative news that is running through, then that is something that I would always advise you to first look at. If you have to look at entering any particular instrument, a stock, a commodity, please understand what is happening. Uh, in that particular area first before you take any uh, trades based on technical analysis. Moving forward, first thing that we're going to be looking at today is the average true range. Now, I will make it very simple to understand what an average true range is. And I will be showing this to you all even on uh, uh, the practical side of it. I will show you how to apply an average true range on your charts and why is average true range important for us today. So basically, average true range is a technical indicator measuring market volatility. Uh, it typically it is typically derived from 14-day 14, 14 movement. So when, when we are talking about 14-day moving average, we are talking about the last 14 days. For example, if we take Apple, we want to look at the last 14 days of movement that Apple has done. When I say movement of Apple, that means from the time Apple opened in the market and it closes. And we take 14 such days to analyze and get an average true range out of those 14 days. So in short, what does ATR do for us? ATR in very simple terms helps us identify how many dollars can Apple move in a single given point of time. Now, if I'm looking at a daily chart, if I'm looking at a daily chart on Apple and I switch on my ATR, it will show me on an average on a day daily basis, how many dollars can I expect Apple to move? Please note uh, the direction of the movement is not uh, um, not a signal over here. It just gives us 
the average movement of that particular stock price. Let's say, for example, Apple moves about four dollars a day. Now, the four dollars could be on the upside, or the four dollars could also be on the downside. So there is no direction indicated by ATR. But one good thing that it gives us is it helps us identify how many dollars it can move in a single day. Now, if you take a larger time frame, it can help us understand how many dollars can Apple move in a week's time. If you're looking at a little longer period of investment, and if you're looking at a very long term investment and you're looking at a monthly uh, uh, return on Apple, you can always look into a monthly time frame and it shows you how many dollars you can expect Apple to move in a given month. Now, I have a couple of examples over here. This is S&P 500, Standard & Poor 500, the top 500 companies of US put into one index. So you're going to be looking at S&P 500 movement. And if you can look at the charts over here, you will see that there has been a lot of movement that has happened in S&P 500 from 2018 till date. And I'm looking, the time frame that I'm talking to you about is on the left hand side, where you see your weekly uh, time frame that I have chosen for this particular uh, example. And if we go back all the way to 2018, the bottommost part shows you the ATR. This is the average true range. Back in the days around 2018 time, you could see that in a week, S&P 500 used to move maximum $60 or anywhere between $40 to $60 in a single week. For example, if you had to buy uh, SPX at the lower end and you wanted to expect a return from SPX going forward in the next week or so, you could expect any return from $40 to $50. Now, provided that you ended up buying right at the bottom, but if you did end up buying right at the top, you could expect SPX to drop by 40 or $60 every week. So accordingly, you can make a decision whether on how much quantity you will want to be investing into SPX. Now, if we come to the current week, which is as of now in the month of uh, Jan, you will see SPX moves almost double of what it used to move in 2018. Now it moves almost $120 in a given week. Now let's break it down into a smaller time frame. Now I've just moved on to a daily chart. So this is a daily chart. Now we are looking at uh, 2020 May onwards till today, right? If you see on a daily moment, SPX gives you a good moment of $45 and it has somewhat been consistent for quite some time. So on a daily average moment, you can expect SPX to move $45. When I say $45, again, it's not the direction of the move. It can move in your favor by $45. It can move against you by $45 on a given period of time. Now, there is, again, it is not hardbound rule that it will move only $45. It can go beyond $45. Uh, if you look at what happened in November, there was this big drop and this big spike back up in the market that came in. At that point of time, SPX on a daily range was moving about $80 per day. Let's break it down to even more smaller time frame. Now, same SPX on a 30 minute chart. And we are looking at data from 11th of Jan till date because this itself is quite a lot of data. Now, on a shorter time frame, you could you will see a lot of spikes and drops because on a shorter time frame, there is a lot of noise that uh, comes into the market. However, just to understand how it works on a shorter time frame, we can expect uh, this. When I say shorter time frame, I'm looking at a 30 minute chart. So we are talking about every 30 minutes, we can SP, uh, we can uh, see SPX move by six to seven dollars on an average. And yesterday was an exceptional day where the market had given a sudden drop. So you saw uh, the spike over here to almost to twelve dollars. So yesterday, in this half an hour period of time, the market where people were expecting it to move by six dollars happened to move by eight dollars, and eventually it has recovered and it's come back to six dollars. So if you are planning to take an intraday trade on SPX, for example, now we understand SPX in the next half an hour can give me maximum six dollars if there is high volatility. It can go up to $12.
so accordingly it will help you make a decision in terms of how many quantity that you want to buy but at the same time it helps you way to keep your take profit and way to keep your stop loss again this is just very basic we cannot do all our trades based on atr alone now let's move forward to fibonacci now fibonacci which is the topic for the day is a very very important i mean very very interesting subject if most of you all have already read about fibonacci before uh, bear with me if you haven't uh, it is very interesting to know what fibonacci is are fibonacci is a series of numbers uh which starts with 0 and 1 if you add your first number with your second number you get your third number so in this particular example if you can look at it you see 0 plus 1 gives you 1 1 plus 1 gives you 2 1 plus 2 gives you 3 2 plus 3 5 3 plus 5 8 and it goes on to infinite you can just keep adding your first number with your second number and it gives you the third number of course starting with 0 and 1 now Fibonacci numbers basically is very interesting uh, for the reasons being it pretty much appears everywhere in life. So Fibonacci sequence also known as the golden ratio appears a lot in nature. Patterns such as spirals in shells, curves of the waves, sea heads, pine cones, branches of trees, all of these can be used describing a mathematical sequence. And this mathematical sequence again falls in line with the numbers that you see over here on Fibonacci. I will try and give you a couple of examples. Uh, the fact that these things at large as spirals of galaxies and as small as the DNA molecules follow the golden ratio rule suggests that Fibonacci sequence is one of the most fundamental characteristics of the entire universe. So now if this is what the theory says, if Fibonacci numbers appear everywhere in life, especially our entire universe and in nature it should somewhat have an influence even on the stock market i mean let's look at it practically and we might get a much better picture on that now coming back to these numbers i'll give you a couple of very simple examples that probably you guys can try it at home uh, or uh, you can google out for more examples on fibonacci uh, some of the examples that you see is the spiral that you can see on the left hand side all right this is the geometrical representation of the fibonacci numbers so what they have done over here is i know it is very small but uh, please bear with me you can see one plus one which is two small squares which has formed two the box number two so if you add two plus three it gives you five five plus eight thirteen eight plus thirteen twenty one and again this goes on to infinite now, if you connect the corners of each of these boxes, for example, let's just look at the box uh, number 13. You take the corner of 13 on the right hand side and the bottommost point of the left hand side. And if you just connect connect these uh, corners, you do the same on every uh, every box over here. You get a spiral. All right. So this spiral is very, very important when it comes to geometric side of it. Of course, it is not uh, that important for us while we are trading, but then it's a good information to know. Uh, the second example over here is the tree. Uh, if you have plants at home, you could probably do this experiment on each of the stem. Uh, try and count how many leaves uh, produce on each stem. Or if you have a bigger tree, you can see how many branches that particular tree has. Most of the time, it always ends with a Fibonacci number. So for example, this particular tree has branched out. And if you see these branches have branched out in the sequence of Fibonacci numbers, I'll give you another example. If you look at one stem of a tree or a plant, most of the time you will see either there are three leaves on it, or there are five leaves on it, or there are eight leaves on it, right? So these all again come back to the Fibonacci numbers. So the Fibonacci numbers are 2, 3, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so forth. Moving forward, now this is our entire galaxy. And when we were talking about the geometrical representation uh, on the graph here, now you can see somewhat there's a resemblance over here. Of course, if you do a more detailed study into it, 
probably you would be able to see the Fibonacci sequence in this as well. But then I've just drawn it to make this example much more easier. But then I would always encourage for, uh, you all to go and uh, do much more in-depth analysis and uh, study about Fibonacci. It's very, very interesting. Now, the most important thing is the golden ratio. Why is Fibonacci known as the golden ratio? So let's go back to our numbers. And if you all have your mobile phones with you, I hope uh, you all are watching this with me on your laptop. If you are not, that is completely fine. Uh, but there's a small experiment that we will try and do. Unfortunately, I won't be able to share uh, my calculator on the screen uh, while, while the presentation is on. But then I'll tell you what to do. So let's pick any of the first numbers. Let's say, for example, 233 and divide it, it by the second number 377. So 233 divided by 377. Multiplied by 100 because I'm trying to get a percentile. Just try that out on your uh, mobile phones or your calculator. Take uh, two, three minutes of your time and just uh, put in your answers on the chat. So I'm, I, I'll be doing the same thing with you all. I'm doing 233 divided by 377 into 100. All right. And I've got a number. I've got my answer. If Anybody else has done the calculation, I would encourage you guys to share it on the chat. All right, nice. So now that most of you all have done your calculation that you see the result that you've got at the end of it is 61.8. All right. Now let's just do one more. Uh, exercise with a different number right let's try it with a bigger number let's try it with uh, probably 10,946 divided by 17711 17,711 all right i'm going to do that with you 10,946 divided by 17711 into 100 and Again, I've got my answers ready. I'll just wait for you all to punch in your answers on the chat. Perfect. And now that you all have done the calculation and you see the percentile again, it came down to 61.8. So now 61.8 is known as the golden ratio. And the reason we need to convert these numbers into ratios is because the market does not go on these numbers by itself, but the market moves on percentages. Uh, if the market you hear, you know, Apple is up by, up by 2% or Tesla is up by 10% or tomorrow probably uh, if there's a negative news, you, you see in the markets that Tesla is down by 5% based on this particular news. So everything works in percentages, including your investment and your growth. So Fibonacci, first we need to convert into our uh, percentages and then we can implement the same thing on our charts. Now let's move forward. Now we've, that we've understood the Fibonacci side of it, let's go forward and see the charts. All right, now let me do uh, one thing. Let me skip this example and do this live for you. So it will be more easier to understand how to apply Fibonacci and how to uh, see where your entries and exits are coming on Fibonacci alone. Just bear with me for one minute as I change my slide. All right, so I'm guessing everyone's getting to see my chart. 
I hope it's clear. I'll try and make it a little bigger so it's more easier to see it. All right. I think that should be more clearer now. All right. So I've taken again SPX as an example for this particular uh, webinar. I have taken a monthly time frame. All right. This is the monthly time frame. So that means I'm looking at uh, SPX 500 all the way back from 1995 till today right every candlestick so for all the very new beginners uh, if you are not understanding what these candles represent whenever i choose a time frame for example like for now i've chosen one month each of this candle represents one month's move so for example if i just look at this particular candle here this red candle here this tells me on this particular month that is february 2020 the market had dropped and the lines over here the bottom most line and the top most line represents the high uh, the market went to and the low it went to and the body represents at what price did the market open and at what price did the market close so the market opened at this price and it had gone above its uh, open price then it came back below its open price, went all the way low and eventually closed somewhere in the middle. So because the close is below the open price, it becomes a red candle and the same thing vice versa for a green candle. So for a green candle, you will see this particular month, the market had gone up in the month of April. So the body represents the open and the close. And the tail represents after it opened the low it made and the high it has made right so now coming back to uh, fibonacci now we know that each of these candlesticks represents each month so we are looking at data all the way from 1995 till date now when it comes to fibonacci we are measuring a percentage either towards the upside or we are measuring a percentage towards the downside now one more example I would give you since I mentioned to you all about 61.8 is the golden ratio. I mean, uh, the golden ratio 61 point is very, very crucial for everything that we see in life. Uh, this one uh, experiment that you all can do at home if you can is, uh, for example, let's take my height from my head till my toe. If, let's say if my height is about 100 centimeter, for example, only, right? And if you measure only my hip bone till my feet, and if you have to take a percentage of that entire 100 centimeter, how much percentage is my lower body? It usually comes up to 61.8 percentage of my entire height, right? Uh, another example I would give you is my arm from my shoulder till my fingertips, all right? If I have to measure the centimeters, and my elbow comes exactly at 61.8 of my entire arm length. Now, why am I telling you this is because 61.8 acts as a very crucial point for our human body in terms of, you know, where your uh, upper body and your lower body has been divided. It's not divided 50-50. So you'll never see uh, your upper body exact in the same uh, length as your lower body. Your lower body is always longer than your upper body and your upper body comes to 61.8 sorry your lower body the entire uh, percentage out of 100 percent is at 61.8 same with your arm if you see your forearm to your fingers are much more longer compared to your shoulder to your elbow so and this elbow is at 61.8 uh, percentage of my entire 100 percent length of my arm so if that is the case in a human body and it is very crucial for our human body to work that way. Let's look at the same thing with our markets. Now, when I'm talking about my height, let's just assume the lowest point in a market is the feet and the highest point in the market is the head, right? So now I need to measure the upside that has happened. And then, so usually you find out the uptrend is over after a couple of months when you see a downtrend has begun. Like for example, let's say this downtrend began. So by the time the market had come somewhere around these levels, 
is where one identifies that the uptrend is over and a downtrend has begun. Now the question is whenever there is a downtrend, it is an opportunity to buy because you always buy at a lower price and you sell at a higher price, right? Now when it is dropping, it is an opportunity for every investor to come inside and buy. But then what is the signal that we would get to identify where to buy? Probably some would end up buying at this price, right? Probably some would end up buying at this price. The ones who are very, very lucky would end up buying at this price, right? Now, there are different levels where a particular person can enter into the market, but it still does not give you a solid uh, basis as to why you should be buying at any of these points. Even if someone bought it right at the bottom would have been the most genius person on earth because he got at the right price. But then either it was based on some analysis or it just happened that he was there at the right time. Now let's remove the equation where that did not happen and you need to identify where to enter and this way Fibonacci comes into use. So if you go to your draw tools in your chart at the bottom, you have something known as draw tools, right? You click on draw tools and this window opens up. You have a lot of options here. The one that we are looking at is for Fibonacci. Now, how do you draw Fibonacci? Like I said, this would be the feet and this would be the head before, you know, the drop started happening. Now, in this particular case, if you notice the drop happened and it bounced out from here, let's just take Fibonacci, mark my lowest point and mark your highest point before the market jumped back up again. So let me try and uh, draw that again without all this. So it's more clearer. So you choose the bottommost point. So why am I choosing this point and not all the way here? Reason being, I saw uh, a momentum picking up from this region and not this region. So I choose the momentum where it began from and I stop at where the momentum stopped. Now let me just clear out all the other numbers and leave only 61.8. So I'm just going to remove the rest and I'm going to leave 61.8 alone. Yeah. So in this aspect, if you look at it, the market had bounced up. It came back down. It took support from unknown region and it jumped back up again. It came back down again. It took support again, pretty much from another unknown zone and it started going back up. Now, if you look at this region, it is coming down to 61.8 on this Fibonacci. Now, before I move forward, I will uh, give you a uh, couple of minutes to ask me any questions. If you all have any doubts in terms of how did you draw Fibonacci or if you want to know, if you want me to explain uh, 61.8 again, just uh, type in your chat and I will explain it to you before I move forward. All right, so I'm guessing uh, most of you all have understood the concept. Okay, someone has asked me to draw it again. Let me draw it again for you all. So how do you draw Fibonacci? We need to identify the lowest point before the rally began and where the rally ended. So in this case, the rally began from somewhere here. You can see this momentum going upside and the acceleration picked up from here. So this entire thing is the rally. and it eventually stopped here before it started coming back down again. So I select my Fibonacci from my draw tools. You go to your draw tools, select Fibonacci, click on Fibonacci, choose the bottommost point, click once, choose the highest point, click again, and it draws for you automatically. Right? So that is how Fibonacci is drawn. Now, why am I showing you this on a monthly chart? Because it's more easier for us to see a clean chart. So if you look at this chart, you see a clean movement that has been happening in the market. Now, the next question that all of us would have is, 
find if we identify our entry point where should my exit point be right so that is the next problem we need to solve so with fibonacci we learn to understand where to enter but it is also very key to understand where to exit i will show you probably the most traded uh, instrument apple right everybody has apple shares i'll do the same on apple i am going for a monthly chart over here right so i have monthly charts now we are going to look at apple's movement now this move that has happened here in 2020 has been amazing and the movement is still uh, continuing but let's just look at the drops so when i spoke to you all about fibonacci i look at entries and exits so i am looking at every drop and every spike so if i just so this was a low point once upon a time before it made a new high okay somewhere here and then there was a drop in the market okay all right so from this drop again there was a momentum back upside where the upside momentum stopped and there was a drop in the market and then again you see upside and there's a drop in the market <coughs> now for everyone who likes to trade apple <coughs> or at least invest into apple it would be nice if somebody told them that this was a good entry point because these are all the low points that anyone can enter and still make a good uh, return uh, in the future now recently we had this drop over here okay from this point and it is continuing to go up now let's just measure these drops all of these what i have marked in fibonacci so i'm going to take my lowest point i'm just going to change my candlestick into a different style for you to see the trend but don't do not worry about it it's just it's the same thing it's just going to show us different uh the where the trend began and where the trend ended so the trend began over here and the trend ended trend began and the trend ended now i'm going to use my fibonacci choose my lowest point again the feet of this particular rally to the highest point which is the head for this particular rally now i'll try and zoom this in okay it's not letting me zoom in but then i think you all can pretty much see it went up and when the drop came back it came back to 61.8 levels of this rally and then it started moving back up now let's look at the next side where so this is going to be the feet of this particular rally and the head of where the rally stopped okay i think now we can zoom in a little more if you notice again the market went up it came back to 61.8 and it bounced back up right so this was a potential good entry point now it did not end there let's look at the next leg where from this point it rallied up and it dropped here so let's look at this being my bottom most point this being my highest most highest point so basically this is the feet this is the head so i'm just giving you an example of feet and head so that you understand every rally is a body and we need to understand when the body the head is done it has to come back somewhere close to its hip so this is the example that i give you of a human anatomy so again 61.8 over here and apple continues to rally now since i've changed my candlestick you cannot see any more reds so that means the trend from here is still going on so the negative trend has not yet begun basically this upside is still going on so probably it can go on much further it can continue going on even more higher or it probably can end today and start coming back down so if you ask me vivian what should i do in apple as of today my recommendation would be wait for it to give a drop and when it drops wait for the 61.8 and from there you can buy it back and let's say it goes back to its all time high again you make a 64% return so imagine imagine a return of 64% on apple 
uh, and you all you need to do is just wait for the drop to come in now i understand there's a rush in the market that there's a lot of stimulus that is happening in the market joe biden being much more safer for the market comparatively to donald trump who was very volatile for the market we might tell ourselves that we are going to miss out an opportunity if you do not buy it today which i totally agree so let's say somebody buys today i am not saying apple cannot go to 180 from 140 or probably apple can even go to 200 without giving a drop but then again it is not wise for someone to buy something right at the top because the entire flow is going there so what you do is and now when i'm talking about buying when it drops i'm talking about it on a very very broad perspective in a very long term perspective we do the similar analysis on a smaller time frame so if you want to buy today you will not be looking at a monthly chart rather you would be looking at probably a 30 minute chart if you're looking at a very short term trade or if you're looking at a weekly return you you'll be looking at a 4 hour or a daily chart so i'm just showing it to you on a monthly time frame in terms of long term investment but the same examples that i showed you all over here is what will be replicated even on a shorter time frame now a few more interesting things that i would like to show you all is now that we understood that apple bounced back on every 61.8 that gives you a good sense of relief so next time when apple starts dropping we understand and we know that we should not be jumping into a long term investment as soon as you saw see a small uh, percentile drop you will always wait for it to come back down till 61.8 for you to book your profits oh sorry for you to enter uh, and then uh, in why i said book your profits is because i haven't mentioned to you all about when do we book profits so yeah so we wait for it to come back down to 61.8 uh, to enter now let's assume that somebody had entered at this last drop over here right and the question is where do we exit so there are three types of exits you can exit at a reversal of 61.8 all this while we were measuring bottom to top now let's use the same fibonacci to measure top to bottom right so i'm just measuring top to bottom now you see top to bottom when it goes back up it again goes back up near 61.8 so basically you can exit at this price 61.8 over here so that's a 32% return by itself all right that is one second point of exit would be when it goes back to its previous highs this point over here which is a 52% all right the third point of exit is if you still have the patience to hold on to it because now we are looking at only a long term investment you can wait for once it goes beyond 100% the next level that you will be looking at is 161.8 right so that is a 86% return if you had to buy at this lower side of apple i will give you another example probably on a different instrument uh, let's say us 30 i will do monthly chart i will do the same examples on a shorter time frame so that uh, the ones who are uh, doing on a very short time uh, frame trades you'll be able to use the same same fundamental principle in terms of how to identify entries and exits but on a shorter time frame uh, i have couple of questions let me just go through and see if i can answer some of them all right so most of you all have asked me how did you draw the fibonacci so i think i've already covered that but then i'm still going to be uh, drawing fibonacci so if you all still have doubts later i will cover it one more time so now let's look at us 30 again now we are looking at us 30 for the last 24 years i'm looking at a monthly chart all right now let's assume that somebody had bought at this lowest point over here okay and is holding on to the position as of today right but in the meanwhile if he had to book profits what are the levels that he could have booked profit is again you click on fibonacci you're going to you're not going to take the bottom most point to the highest point now 
now we are we identified entries now we are trying to identify exits after i buy at the most lowest point where do i exit so i choose the topmost point to my bottom most point so now if you can look at it if somebody bought at this price he could have entered here and exited at 61.8 so that's roughly about 72% return over there right but if you are a long term uh, buy and hold you could still hold on to it till it goes to the previous high which is about 120% return now let's say if someone is willing to hold on to it even more further down a further upside the next target for you would be at 161.8 right and it goes on more than 161.8 it can uh, let me just change the values and add some more 2.618 so that is 261.8 and we can also add 3.618 that is 361.8 just adding all of these so that we can see where the market went so i am doing an, an analysis what happened in 2008 but even till today it gives me a significant sense of entries and exit so you will see that someone who had entered at this price could still hold on to it from there till here and probably could have booked a profit at 261.8 so that's about 300% return now of course nobody is going to hold on for such a long period of time the reason i have mentioned these shorter targets including the longer term targets is because depending on what kind of a trader you are if you are a very long term trader you can always watch out for higher levels of 61.8 for you to be booking a profit but if you are a very short term trader you can look at the lower values of uh, booking profit now let me do the same thing on maybe a daily chart okay now we understood this how it works on a long time frame how about for someone who is doing on a very shorter time frame does it still work out the same now i have just changed it to a 30 minute time frame and you can see a lot of noise right now the only way i minimize noise is by changing my candlestick to haikanashi right haikanashi gives you trends in the market probably 4 hours would be a decent yeah so now you can see a lot of heads tails sorry heads and uh, feet over here so now this was one bottom most point this was another high point now i'm looking at a shorter time frame so that means i'm looking from november till date lower point higher point again lower point higher point okay and this this analysis can go on and it can go on even now right now so before i come to uh, what is happening right now let me just show you how the performance was if we had to do fibonacci for us to buy every time it came down so for example in this particular case we saw market rally up from here ideally i would have wanted it to come back here that would have been the 61.8 right ideally i would have wanted it to come here to buy but it did not it eventually jumped back up so i discount this particular rally because this rally has no significance as long as it does not come till 61 bond day the minute it comes down till here then this particular rally will be of some significance now that is over for a short term trader the next rally i look at is this particular rally here right so if you if i can zoom this in you will see this rally upside it came back down to 61 bond day this was your buying opportunity okay and now i'm measuring top to bottom it went back up around 61 point 8 this would be your short term target okay but if you were willing to hold on for a little more longer you would have got a little higher target which is the 100% of this high point here right so this gave you a return of 2% this gave you a return of 3% now again the 3% is because we are looking at a shorter time frame now let's look at another leg here let's look at this particular rally if you notice this also came down to 61.8 and it bounced back up right now let's look at the tiniest rally the most smaller ones let's look at this particular rally here 
This breached 61.8, but eventually it did hold 61.8 and bounced back up. Now let's look at the next one. Let's look at this rally. This did not exactly touch 61.8, but was pretty much close to 61.8. And so most of the rallies that you see will always eventually come down till 61.8 and bounce back up. Now, just because every time it comes down to 61.8, does not mean it cannot go beyond that and hence we need to have stop losses let's take an example of this particular rally from this point to here now let's look at this it came back to 61.8 ideally a very good level to buy but in this case it breached everything and it has gone down all the way to 161.8 on the downside and then bounced back up so if at any given point of time, if you had taken a trade here and did not keep a stop loss, your loss would have increased. And the potential is there is not always a requirement that it needs to stop at 161.8. It could go down even till 261.8 or it could even go down till 361.8. So whenever you enter on 61.8, it is not 100% guarantee that you're going to make money. There are days where it is going to break 61.8 and go all the way down. And hence, we recommend you to keep stop losses no matter how confident or how uh, how many times that particular strategy has made you profits. Okay, probably it made you profits 100 times, uh, but still keep a stop loss on your 111th trade because markets might still change its direction based on the news and the fundamentals that keeps pouring in. Now let's look at this particular drop to this particular upside, right? This, this was one big move. Of course, there were smaller moves. I can measure those as well. But then one big move is this. It came down to 61.8. This became a very good entry level for me. And this goes on. Now let's look at a couple of, I hope I get some live trades, but I'm going to go into a five minute chart. This is not advisable at all. I'm just doing this for the sake of demonstration. Uh, I'm going to be looking at these rallies. So, right. So in the last five minutes, so this is from last three o'clock till now, every candlestick represents a five minute move. So I can see that, you know, this bottommost point to this highest point, it has given a good drop. And it has come to a level where I can buy US 30. In fact, I've missed my opportunity. It's already bounced back up, right? So if someone had to buy it at this price today, somewhere here, someone had to buy it here. Okay. We need to keep a stop loss uh, below your 61.8. So there are other levels in Fibonacci. There is 78.6 and there is 88.6. But ideally, it, depending on your risk appetite, you might have to keep a stop loss below this entire 100%, basically this below this entire Fibonacci that you have drawn. I'll just give you an example of how the trade would look like. Right, if someone had to take a buy at this price and keep a stop loss here. Okay, now let's assume that this is a $100,000 account. I probably am taking an intraday trade with a stop loss. So I don't mind putting in full 100,000 because I'm keeping a stop loss. So I know that if the price comes down to this level, I'm going to lose $200, right? So my entry is this blue line, if you all can see it, right? This is my potential entry price as per 61.8, right? Like, as you can see over here, my exit stop loss is somewhere here. Now the take profit. Where do I keep my take profit? Somewhere here or back at the peak of this. So ideally it will be back to the upside. So which is about $390 if you uh, manage to wait till, you know, it goes back up. But a shorter target would be 61.8. So I'm measuring top to bottom to identify my take profit. Right now, I'm not identifying entry. Entry was already identified. Now I'm just identifying my exit. So my exit would be somewhere around these levels. So if you look at it, the risk reward is not that great because your target is much more closer 
but if you can wait it out till 100% move on the upside then your reward is almost equivalent to your risk beyond that would be your 161.8 your next target on the upside which will give you a profit of 674 dollars now what did fibonacci do for us from this entire explanation that i gave you here was it helps us identify good entries and exits either on a five minute chart or on a monthly chart on a weekly chart on a daily chart depending on what kind of an investor you are if you're looking at short-term trades probably uh, this five minute chart would have worked out for you because you're just looking at next 30 minutes move okay but if you're a investor who's looking at maybe a quarter or six months then five minute chart would not work for you and you would have to go into a daily chart or maybe even a weekly chart to understand the moment to understand what to uh, what can be uh, done in the future now if you look at on a weekly chart i would not recommend anybody to buy at this price because the market is already at the peak right if you are a investor who is waiting to buy and hold for the next six months or a year you rather wait for this to drop down to a certain level before you buy and that drop will be this was the bottom most point before the rally began right for this particular us 30 you would wait for it to come down at least till twenty eight thousand before you buy it back and hold on to it for the next three to six months right now there is FOMO that happens, fear of missing out, and a lot of people end up buying right at the top. I'm not discouraging anyone from buying right at the top. You may do so, but do not put your entire investment right at the top. You break it down into parts. So you even if you have to buy it right at the top, probably you just invest 5% of your entire account value today because markets are trading right at the top. So even if the market crashes by 20% tomorrow, you are not going to lose out on too much of your equity and in fact you still have 95 percent of your equity ready to be invested into the market so you can always break it down in lower levels if you have the fear of missing out but if you have the patience to wait for every 61.8 that would be great uh, what i would advise is each one of you all uh, please go through whatever i've showed today and if you all have any queries, please get in touch with your respective relationship managers or whoever you have been in touch with from Century. And probably we can arrange a one-on-one -on -one session for you to understand this even more better. And probably on a one-on-one -on -one session, you, you will be free to ask all the questions that you have. I hope uh, all the sessions that I have covered today is going to be uh, useful for you. Uh, recording... I have some questions if the recording will be made available. Yes, in the future, we are going to be releasing these recordings out. But however, do not worry, even if the recording does not come out, uh, you can always schedule a one on one se uh, session with uh, one of our advisors or even me. Uh, and we, we can go through this full uh, session all over again. Uh, this is a very new concept for most of you who have not uh, traded before, but for the ones who have been trading, it would have been much more easier for you to grasp, but however practice makes it perfect. I would advise you, if you have a live account, uh, still use a demo account to practice Fibonacci first to buy, to see how to enter, how to exit, how to draw Fibonacci. And uh, if you have further questions than that, please do reach out to us. I hope this session was easy and uh, it was informative and it was helpful for you all. Please uh, give me your feedback on your uh, on my on the chat so that you know I can uh, help you all. I can uh, schedule for more sessions and probably I can improvise if I'm lacking in any area. Please do give me your feedback and your feedback is valuable to us. Thank you again for your time. Thank you for taking time out for this webinar. Have a great evening. I'll see you all soon. Take care.